Well, folks, yeah. Mm -hmm. Your boy is back, the Wolf of Crypto. It's been a minute here, folks. Uh, You guys are listening here to the Wolf of Crypto podcast. Yeah. Brand new season. Why? Because, man, we changed up the title here. Changed up the podcast name. And uh, to be honest with you, your boy was a little burnt out here, Um, especially after obviously watching you know market crash and all that which we expected that right we we knew that was coming but as far as the burnt out part meaning like you know just being so deep into the crypto rabbit hole especially when it came to my youtube channel and then after what happened with the market it got to a point where it was like you know what we need to re-strategize we need to figure out what the heck we're going to be doing moving forward because obviously and take it from me here folks when we were in that bull market woo wee the things that I was able to do especially when it came to obviously crypto um it was inspiring especially you know being in my position um really obviously not having a lot to play with in the crypto market but obviously you know during that time we were pretty up being able to travel doing you know things that we pretty much wanted to do and yes it was mainly all off of crypto but obviously like i said market crashed shoot not just that market crash stock market crash world pretty much was on fire and a lot of the unfortunately projects that i had been following um, some of them I was promoting across my different channels. Um, a lot of those, unfortunately, went under or just gave up. I mean, when Solana crashed, that was, uh, I would say that was a, the downfall for a lot of projects, especially if they didn't have enough liquidity to keep the project going. And then on top of that, um, just seeing, you know, some of the mayhem that, occurs in some of these discord groups obviously having to deal with all the different spam of you know people trying to grab your wallet and all that stuff like i don't think people really realize unless you're you know heavy into the space there's so it's the wild wild west man um a lot of people leave with a bad taste in their mouth and they're you know they never come back um those of us that you know been in the crypto space for a minute i mean for me this will be what i'm about to be six years in um kind of you know like i said discovered the whole crypto space towards the end of 2017 um so you know for me you know i've seen some things so my expectations when you know certain things go wrong or um don't live up to expectations it's always interesting to kind of step back and look at other people's perspectives especially if they're like new to the space or you know they're greedy um those people i feel like tend to get hit hard the most um yeah don't get me wrong yes i lost money i mean that's just part of the it's part of the game man it's part of the investing world it's part of, you know trading anything that has a risk yeah you could potentially lose right and um you know there was a lot of nfts obviously nfts that whole space itself it's still new <laughs> when the nfts were doing that whole craze last year i mean i think a lot of people were just kind of overlooking maybe the underlining messages or underlining things that some of these projects you know might have red flags on but at the same time you know people were you know making money capitalizing people were just you know they flocked to what's trending right and uh me 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 included and now i'm over here um just kind of reviewing all the different projects that i was really you know not seriously heavily invested in you know obviously i would throw some money into the project see what would happen yada 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 and then you know turn around it's like ooh, no that's an l that's an l that's an l so now i think my view on nfts obviously is 
when it comes to investing into that space, um, probably want to stick to what I know. And what I mean by that is just projects that, you know, I can not just one trust, but, you know, they actually have some type of utility, real functionality to them to a point where like, you know what, I, I know that these projects are going to be here and come to find out it's for me, I probably have about what? I would say maybe three to five maybe di different EFT projects that I can say that going forward, I'm going to, you know, focus on that. That's like same thing goes with, you know, coins. There's a lot of different coins that we had in the portfolio that, you know, when the crash happened, to keep it 100, probably a lot of these, some of these coins probably won't, you know, ever crack back the top 50 top 100 i mean so that's also something that's like man we we had to come back to the drawing board and figure out all right what is it exactly that we want to just like i said hone our focus in and attack it and attack it hard um so that's why i've been on because like i said i got burnt out here folks i mean because obviously, if you have been in that crypto rabbit hole, crypto don't sleep here, folks. It's it's twenty four seven, man. Uh, it's anything like we've seen. Um, obviously, as of recently, the market has did a little run. Now, my eyes pin. Obviously, I feel like people that try to predict the market is kind of tough. But I know there's a lot, of, you know, TA that kind of goes into it. But I think this recent one that we had is i think it's just you know i think it's smoke screen i think that you know we're gonna eventually probably go back down and it's funny when i say go back down because there's a lot of times in these different ways that we have when you know obviously we have a little run or where it could be and that saying of man when it goes back down i'm gonna get some more and we're at this price range where you know you could probably get a couple ethereum uh depending on your personal finances bitcoin you know that's obviously a goal that i want to get at least one before it just you know shoots off to the point where it's like ooh, it seems like it's not you know attainable um so now like i said i look at my portfolio i'm like yeah you know what some of these coins that have been here for a minute or at least the ones i've used and had really no issues um bitcoin ethereum litecoin uh i'm still gonna be obviously you know buying solana and when it comes to the other ones this is where it gets really interesting not for sure if i'll be buying you know too much of the altcoins like i said main goal as of right now is to try to attain as much and accumulate as much bitcoin as possible like i said try to get at least one if i can get one and i'm gonna say you know obviously this depends on market conditions if i can get one before the next run and it you know stays in the i'm gonna say let's say it stays in a price threshold of anywhere from like 20 bands to about 30 bands goal will be right now is to obviously get one bitcoin ethereum um i actually pretty close to actually obtaining my first full ethereum i'm at like what 0. 0.7 or 0. 0.8 something like that so i'm not really too far off um go for ethereum same thing with them i would like i'm gonna go ahead and throw out at least five to ten of those bad boys and like i said at yeah, this price range right is right now because the way i think ethereum is going to perform this year you know all the new upgrades yada yada, yada you know it's I've seen Ethereum do some crazy things. I remember when Ethereum was at, you know, $300, $400, even if not even, I think it might, might have been a little bit lesser than that. And then, you know, it shot to like a band or something like that. It was crazy. But again, Bitcoin, Ethereum, those are the two heavy hitters that, again, when it comes to investing, trying to avoid putting money into, you know, stuff that I'm, I just end up losing. Because, you know, after a while, you do kind of get annoyed. You're like, damn, is this... Is everybody just out here trying to scam? Because, you know, a lot of 
a lot of NFT projects were scams, man, which is unfortunate. Obviously, there's some big time heavy hitters that are still out there. Um, I actually need to get back into that world and that side of things to actually see, you know, who's still around, you know, whose coins are still doing what? Because, I mean, after all the amount of collapses of exchanges, projects, I got a list that I'll probably break down over the next few episodes, um, kind of like my different strategies and different projects that I'm going to <laughs> retouch on. Start to recover them. I'm not even thinking about bringing back the crypto hopper. Because, uh, again, man, when we're in a bear market like this and everything's cheap, there's always been those times when you're, especially for me, and when we were in the bull market, I was like, man, if Bitcoin does get back to those levels or if the crypto market does get back to those levels, yes, I'm going to be buying a shit ton. So I already started that mission. Um, cryo actually they got me on the foot y'all i actually kind of i don't know after seeing voyager ftx uh i'm trying to think was there any other exchange collapses you know there was rumors and like i said a lot of fud being spread about cryo and i was just like man maybe for right now we should probably just take some money out of there and put it into, like I said, I just took the money out I had cryo and put it into Ethereum. Um, that was a good move because obviously Ethereum had has done well in the last couple of days. And then cryo is still at, you know, a, a super low price level. So, I mean, I can always, you know, get back and kind of got away from using the car. I know I, you know, you get the stake to use the car. So there was a lot of different things that cryo and just their whole, business of what they did when it came to like certain cuts when it came to their card and you know some of their incentives you know they've they've cut on that heavily um so again like i said there's a lot of different projects that i was covering thinking hey you know this could be this could be something and then it turned out to be nothing but like i said it's all part of the game this is all part of crypto crypto is still a space that still young still early um but yeah man and on top of that when i was you know doing pretty well when it came to the crypto market making some good investments finding good projects that you know had some good returns um traveling man being able to travel use it pretty much anywhere and actually see it um in certain places uh, i was able to go like to what oslo i went to tel aviv i was in the bahamas i went to aruba so like i, I was doing a lot of different things that i had set out to do and figure you know what if i can get this done now i have that experience and now i can learn from that come back and try to only elevate even higher and what i mean by that is you know leveraging leverage leverage is a powerful tool um so i have to obviously you know get back into the working world but we won't be here for too long folks and the reason why i say this because again the strategies that we had to go back relook at reanalyze figure out all right what are the best moves to, to do going forward and that's what i'll be talking about over the next couple of episodes um definitely will be bringing a lot more this season and some of the projects at least when it comes to the nft side the ones that i'm going to probably just like i said stay in my lane with would be nba top shot um that's something where I'm like, you know what? I should get more invested into this. Why? Because, well, one, obviously, the NBA is always going to be here. Trading cards, that whole market. To see what has happened in what, the last, what, couple of years, I would say, just how people have been, you know, going back to that collector side of when you used to collect cards as a kid and now still to this day. 
So people collecting cards, trading those type of things, those those collectible items, that's still a thing. So now I'm like, all right, let me go ahead and get on my NBA Top Shot because I was looking at it the other day how I joined back in what? I think I joined back in 2021, if I'm not mistaken. Right now I have about 77 moments, um, but I haven't finishing sets yet. So that's something that, you know, as a collector, especially, you know, being a person that likes to gain different achievements, especially from playing video games and all that stuff. Um, that actually comes in handy for, you know, certain rewards. I had seen that, you know, uh, for All-Star Weekend, you know, depending on what type of collector you were, you had the chance to, you know, get all access to the All-Star Weekend, go to the game. I was like, oh, okay. So this thing is something that I should should have been probably putting a lot more money into. Um, it was actually funny because when way back, like I said, when this is all during when the bull market was happening, I think my at that time my NBA Top Shot portfolio was like I think like worth like four hundred or five hundred dollars, and I was like, huh? And mind you, I don't have you know any really I would say elite moments. I mean, I got some you know high serial number moments, depending on you know what type of <laughs> collection set you're referring to. Um, but that's something that, again, going forward, definitely going to be heavily diving into that world. Same thing goes for NFL uh, Top Day. I, I think that's what this. I think that's what theirs is called. Um, and that's basically the you know, NFL version of Top Shot. Eventually, I'm pretty sure soccer will get one. I'm pretty sure almost every sport was is going to get one. Um, possibly, maybe. I don't know. Just depending on the league, obviously. Soccer has a lot of different leagues, so I can obviously see them come into that market. Um, another NFT project that you guys will be hearing me talk about a lot going forward, and I can't wait for actually for this one. This is I would say this is probably one of the top NFT projects that I'm, I'm really, really excited about because, one, it's, it's pretty sick. Two, they've been doing everything that they've said they've been going to do, and I was actually had the chance to meet the, one of the founders. Um, this is project called Crypto Grow, and it's basically NFTs mixed with cannabis all in one, where you're going to have a machine that can grow weed for you, and you can earn NFTs. Um, so, yeah. So, <laughs> that project, that machine should be here in April, I believe. I still got to check in to see what's going on, the lace on them. But that right there, my friends, that project is legit. I've already seen the the uh, actual part in real life, seen the app. Yeah. So when that comes, yeah, we're we're locked in. We'll be doing a lot of different content creating behind that. Probably gonna be documenting my like, grows and stuff like that. Um, so I would say hey, when it came to the NFT section, NFT sector, those are like probably like the three projects that I'm like, like I said, I'm gonna hone in and attack. And it's not a lot, right? Those are like I said, those are my top three. I gotta go. I said, we look at all my other ones, but I, if I had to <laughs> say, I guess right now I'd say most of them are DEA dead, dead. Um, now, as far as some of these other projects, other coins, um, I'm going to try to obviously find a couple of our coins that I'll, you know, keep in the, in the backyard of the portfolio. Um, but also going forward to getting involved in stocks. Um, I kind of been involved with it a little bit, but not too much. I did find a, a, a new tool that's probably going to help me really get uh, more involved. Um, also want to actually start attacking like dividend stocks um, and just dividends in general. Just trying to figure out other different ways to, you know, get this passive income generated. Uh, because that's what I was, you know, doing with some of these projects in the NFT world, NFT space, you know, it was just bringing in some type of passive income where I was able to, you know, kind of do whatever I felt like from there. Um, but yeah, folks, those of you that have been rocking with me still tapping in every now and then listen to episodes. I really appreciate it. Really appreciate it. But like I said, going forward here in this new season, um, we're going to be. Like I said, we're back. We're back here, folks. We're going to 
Go back into that hole. Go back into the matrix, wherever you want to call it, folks. I call it the matrix. I call it rabbit holes. I mean, it's got so many different names. But like I said, we are coming. Even even Upland. Uh, Upland, this is a, another project. It's kind of MT base ish but they're still out here moving and grooving. So, like I said, on the next couple of episodes, definitely we'll be talking about some of the demise and collapses of projects that I covered and just kind of explaining how everything kind of, you know, came down crumbling and how to really, how it was to really just witness it and just kind of see like some of the different reactions in the discourse groups, some of the excuses people would give. And you're just like, really, man, really? We got we to gotta be better than this for folks. But like I said, it's all learning experiences. You know, this for those of you that might be listening, and again, I always try to tell people, you know, I'm not no financial advisor. You know, investing is risky business here. Don't invest what you're not willing to lose. That's why I try to tell people, but some people don't listen, whatever, yada, yada, yada. Um, but I want to say appreciate y'all tuning in. I am your host, the Wolf of Crypto. And until the next episode, you guys have been listening to the Wolf of Crypto podcast. Y'all take it easy, man. Be safe out there.